When someone is shooting at you, you've got to get out of the danger zone as fast as you absolutely can. Hi everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I am your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Sterling Heights, Michigan. Dark Star Gear is one of the few companies that I trust to make holsters that I wear. They make high quality appendix carry holsters for a variety of firearms manufacturers. Check them out at the link in the description. So the woman who's about to come on screen, her ex-boyfriend has died of a drug overdose and his family blames her for it. And after his funeral, like an hour later, she is getting out into her car here. Now watch, there's going to be a truck that comes up here as she's getting into her car from the right. It's actually parked over on the right, the two-part car there on the right-hand side. The left of those two is the brother of her ex-boyfriend. Now her mom comes out on the porch to watch her go and we're gonna actually hear what happens as he pulls in and blocks her in in just a second. So he's gonna jump out, let's listen in. She drives off and he is gonna go and then chase her. He has shot at her eight times and hit her two times from those eight shots. She's gonna go around the block and what we're going to see is she is actually going to loop back around to the house here and get back out. Let's listen into what she says again. News stories that I've linked in the description said that she actually did live through this and the police, the last I saw, have not made an arrest and that's where this one ends. Ay caramba, that one happened in a hurry. If you wanna build your skill set, not just your mindset, join us on our second YouTube channel, Active Self Protection Extra. We post eight videos there every single week to help you be more effective in your skill set as a self defender. There's a link in the description. First on this one, this does seem to be a case of revenge. It seems to be a case of a romantic relationship gone sour and family vengeance. And of course, let's just take a moment to decry that. That is not how adults do, do things. That's not how a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent people handle their problems. Instead, this guy, whether he's grieving or whatever, takes the law into his own hands and becomes a, an attempted murderer in the process. That's not cool. Now, if you've got an ex-boyfriend whose family is full of crazies, especially, but for all of us, regardless, you gotta pay attention to your surroundings, right? Recognize that your parked vehicle, even in front of your house, is a transitional space and pay attention to your surroundings. For those of us who don't have a crazy family from an ex-boyfriend who might wanna murder us, we do that just to make sure everything is okay. We go to check you know, the, around the surroundings of the vehicle, make sure there's not a kid back behind it or whatever. But especially when you've got a crazy family coming after you like that, you might just look around and go, oh, hey, that's the vehicle of my ex-boyfriend's brother and I know there's bad blood here, so I might need to take steps to protect myself. Instead, I don't think she saw him. I, I, I don't know if he's driving his own vehicle or another one, so I don't blame her for that. But the point of the matter is, again, pay attention to what's going on in your world. Now, of course, get in the car, lock the door, start the engine, put your seatbelt on and get going you know, as relatively quickly as you can. And she kind of takes her time a little bit. I think he was gonna go and get her regardless of anything else. So now she is blocked in at this point and I think she did a good job of at least paying attention to that, but recognize, and I think she does recognize in this once it goes, that yes, the car can't back up any further right now, but it is free to go forward. And so recognize that in emergency situations, curbs are suggestions, not requirements. Of course, that depends on the car that you drive just a little bit, but ignoring them makes a lot of sense. Now he's gonna jump out here as mom's coming to see what the heck is going on and just start shooting. And she does something I think that is very wise here. She just puts it in drive and hits the accelerator. I think this was absolutely the right answer. And I think that if we are talking about even one of us who are concealed carriers, the car is almost certainly the better answer here because you're already well behind the curve. He's already got off two, three, four shots. Your better bet is to get out of the danger zone, get more than 15 yards away from him where most people couldn't hit the, blind, you know, the broad side of a barn rather than try to draw your gun and get into a gunfight with this guy. I think she does a fine job here. Now she's hit twice, so what are you gonna do? My first response here is, is head for the trauma center and call 911 and tell them what's happening. I'm being chased by a man who shot me twice. I'm going to the trauma center, to the, to the emergency room of the hospital. I'm driving in there as hard as I can, as long as I have you know, consciousness or whatever, and I need police to meet me there. Because coming back to the house, while I understand why she did that, 
uh, you know, if you're going into the house here, I don't know if that's the safest place because you know this guy's got a gun. You know he's willing to use it against you. And unless you are, are able to, to barricade yourself into a good spot and end that threat, or maybe she's going into the house to get a firearm or something like that, you're in a bad spot because he could very well chase you back into that house. And you're certainly not going to get to a place where you're going to get medical help for the two gunshot wounds that you have. So I don't think that was the best choice, though I understand why you might do that to try to get to what feels like a safe space. Instead, again, make sure you have your emergency first aid kit on your person. Looks to me like she took one of those shots in her arm, which is why one of the reasons why we say, hey, you don't want to carry a tourniquet and those kinds of things. But getting yourself to the emergency room, especially when you're in the car, here's another good tip, whether from home or from work or for, from a place that you frequent near your home, know where your nearest trauma center is and know how to drive there in a hurry. And then utilize your assistance like Siri or Google or whatever in order to get you where you need to go. I'm glad this woman survived. Let's learn the lessons from her, her ordeal as we seek to cover our ASP.